Hi, my name is Tim Carter, and these are just a few comments about the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary. This is a textbook on Hebrew grammar. It's quite an older one, Yates and Owens. Uh, but just a few comments in it. Its introduction says, It is hoped that the number of Bible students who can turn to the words of Hebrew speaking specifically Hebrew historians, poets, and prophets, instead of depending upon a second-hand version, they hope that that number of Hebrew students would be greatly increased. And it says that that's the aim of this work, this grammar book uh, that was published. It says, It is clear in this day that the translation of the Word of God cannot be left in the hands of a few specialists, but there must be many who are competent to judge and interpret the work of the specialist and to communicate the flavor of the words of the holy men of old to the multitudes who eagerly await the truth which God has spoken. Uh, we've been asked here at I Am Corne, uh, I have several times, when we make assertions that, for example, baptismal regeneration is an impossibility. And they say, what do you mean? You, how can you be so certain? Well, it's a language-based apologetic website. Uh, for example, when someone says, well, how can you be so certain that Haya or Hayatha is come to be? And I tell them it's a language-based apologetic and outreach website. Um, people say, well, what does that mean? Well, in a grammar book, You'll find out just Hebrew alone, uh, it has an alphabet, it has vowels, it uh, has technical matters, uh, it has seven stems, two states, a complete, uh, perfect state, which is usually called the affix state, uh, prefix state, imperfect, incomplete state, it has simple active, simple passive stems, it has intensive active, intensive passive, reflexive, intensive stems. It has causative, active, causative, passive stems. I really, that's just Hebrew. <laughs> and I think the full conjugation of the verb forms are like 207 forms. And we'd write those out and I still have my charts, still have my exams, all of my research, my books, and I guess someone's probably misleading people to suppose that as specific as the Bible is, we can't know. Now, I don't know if you were to ask me about different rapture or uh, rapture conjectures, I wouldn't know. Uh, I can tell you that from the language, it's completely impossible for something called the resurrection to be severed from something called a rapture. Uh, everyone knows that any early grammar student in any grammar class of Greek would know that now why people don't speak that openly I don't know there's a vested interest maybe the president of your school your leader uh, like Al Mohler for example a very scholastic gentleman was defending or asserting adamantly as though somehow he knew how young the earth actually was ignoring exactly what the grammar said. There's a determinant that he's aware of. But now, worse, he may not be aware of. He may not be aware of the Greek New Testament when it translates quotations from the Hebrew Old Testament. And we're taught in Bible 101 that the Holy Spirit inspired uh, the writers to pen the inspired words. And if the translator Holy Spirit says that Ah, yeah, he translates it again, oh my, then oh my, we don't have anything to wonder about. And if Holy Spirit translates, inspires, and um, literally, if we will, uh, scripts for us a text that shows that upon the return of Christ, the dead elect in Christ will be raised first, then we, the living ones, that is, we ourselves, the living ones, the ones remaining around, will be simultaneously seized away together with them I really, to be honest with you, I, I don't know what is it that we're protecting. That is what it is that's causing people to 
to not want to use language-based apologetics. Um, it goes back to their hermeneutics. Um, now I don't know how to resolve all these matters. I know I'm obligated as being ordained by Landmark Missionary Baptist Church uh, and honored to make sure I inform them honestly what can be known from the text, what can be known because of the grammar. Uh, grammar eliminates the speaker. Uh, hermeneutics eliminates the interpreter. <laughs> he has to somewhat step away because the first word in hermeneutics that I was taught in the Missionary Baptist Seminary is yield. <laughs> and you have to really, that's telling, teaching us to yield against our own wills of our flesh and our mind, our desires to, to want to go our own way and prefer what we say. So at IamCornet.org, since it's not a toy website, it's not a commercialized website, uh, it's not a marketing gimmick or ploy, and since it's not really, uh, we don't subscribe to denominated doctrine or sensational things, um, because we have something better. Uh, we have something uh, so much better, and that's why no one will write into us and demonstrate for us why the new birth precedes the point of faith, believe that aorist action, because the text doesn't exist. Uh, they can write in and say that uh, one is fathered prior to the continuation of believing, the becoming a believing one, but no one can demonstrate because the text demonstrates uh, forever and without question it's irrefutable that the purpose of the gospel John 20 31 is in order that a person might deliberately cause cause comes from the Hebrew text grammar it's a causal active and that's in Genesis 15 6 so what is it that's alarming people that who are you all and who do you think you are at that church to demonstrate things that are irrefutable and absolutely true well we don't mean absolutely true because we affirm it we mean because it's what we can know from the text and the learning of grammar and learning of language um, is so that people can know the difference between the text and the talk. See, all religion <clears throat> is, a, is based upon a deviation or a, a, some variant or distance, variance that is, away from the text. Or it wouldn't be, the religion wouldn't exist. Baptismal regeneration, since it doesn't exist in the text, from where did it originate? Well, we had to avoid the text first, so whatever religions there are, and however many there be, um, they're numerous. But just that one thing alone, they build everything upon it. For example, someone says that all religion teaches that they atone for their sins, uh, they must do something to propitiate, and yet the Bible says Jesus is the exclusive propitiation for our sins, not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. So that a person who rejects Christ, for example, and with hell and death, that is Hades and death, is cast into the lake of fire, they're not really being disposed of there for the purpose of atoning for their sins or paying to somehow satisfy God. Uh, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, no one in the Trinity would receive a payment for the sins of man. Jesus paid that all. Jesus paid it all. And Jesus is the exclusive Son of God. And, and then the banter between Arminian and Calvin uh, proponents, it doesn't exist in the Bible. The text doesn't uh, have that. So, no, we don't teach something here and then worry that, oh my goodness, someone's going to find a text somewhere and show us that the new birth actually precedes the point of faith. No, they won't. That'll never happen. Well, someone may prove and demonstrate that Haya is, was. No, that will never happen. Never happened from the text. It'll never be in the Bible. It'll never be written anywhere. Uh, well, someone might show you a text that shows we're baptized with water in order that you might be born again exist. No, the text will never be written that way. Mark 16, 16 will never say, He that believeth and is baptized shall be born again. It will never say that in any New Testament, any Greek New Testament, nowhere in the world. So language-based uh, apologetics is a fruit of language-based hermeneutics which we were taught 
in the Missionary Baptist Seminary. Our hermeneutics professor really emphasized usage of the language, meaning don't learn it for nothing and don't walk around and you hear people say, well, I know Greek and Hebrew. Well, apparently it's not helpful uh, because they still don't use it uh, for their knowledge and interpretations. So why would people who teach and advocate baptismal regeneration want to say we study Greek and Hebrew? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. They won't debate us. They have nothing they can say. I mean, they have a lot they say, but they can't find the text. Uh, for example, a, a language student notices that when John the Baptist baptized Jesus, it says he baptized Jesus into the Jordan River. Now the word river is not there, but you can put it in parentheses to make sure you're communicating to your audience. But being baptized by John into the Jordan River uh, is not an equivalent expression that later when the Bible might have a text that says baptize into uh, release from sins. The release from sins will never be the Jordan River. And you say, well, that's, that's really great to know that. Absolutely. Well, they're not equivalent expressions. Uh, words in the Bible that we know in the Koine Greek will always be the same. They won't change over years and time. The context in which they appear and demonstrating how the author used them will never change. Uh, the Old Testament words won't change. Uh, really, it makes studying uh, beneficial rather than futile. That is, studying the Bible has a utilitarian benefit. It's the ethic of utilitarianism. It's useful. Uh, the Bible even says the love is useful. So certainly the scriptures he's given us are very useful. So here at IamCornet.org, we're not really bantering anybody. Someone said, well, you don't really seem to be yelling and screaming and you don't seem to be condemning people. No, I was called out from all that and trained by the grace of God how to use the languages. I have this old book. This book was not mine. It was found located by a student in Hebrew class I was teaching and I lamented how I could never find one and how mine that I used while I was in seminary and still use today had binder broke and it was all busted. He found this for me and I'm still very grateful. This is a collectible item. It'll go back in the glass case where I keep my really good you know, priceless treasures like this. But that's the rationale for why I don't worry that a Calvinist might to call in or write in or uh, make a video showing where we've aired that that that's not going to happen. There's no the Bible is absolutely true. Not we who use it, but the Bible that was given to us. The author wrote a book that was for us knowable. We can know it. We can use it. Uh, we don't have to waffle back and forth. One thing I appreciate about Landmark Missionary Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Arkansas is they're not a Waffle House. We won't come in next year and uh, all these new glamorous positions that people continue to swing back and forth from. <clears throat> we'll just keep going forward making disciples of all the nations. And uh, enjoy the website. And if you're upset with anything, first ask yourself why. Because I've often, I'm still studying this phenomenon I've observed. Uh, people don't seem to want to be upset at the person who misled them with talk or religious tradition or just complete errors, but they like to be upset at the person who is not committing errors in hermeneutics, who's not misleading them, who's not deceiving them, rather teaching them and telling them what can be known by all rational beings. Uh, so God bless you. This is enough. It's just a note on uh, language-based apologetics and the um, theological seminary uh, that produced this book. Um, and it's really a great book. I'm not really sure why they would ever need to improve upon it. But this is uh, the introduction was from the president, Duke K. McCall, the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary.